Since you're here, I'm gonna assume that maybe, just maybe, you have seen Stranger Things. And if you have, you'll probably remember the part where Joyce tries to talk to Will in the Upside Down using the Christmas lights. Well, I decided to build my own version that I can control and send messages through. Using LEDs, a microcontroller, and a little bit of spare time, I was able to recreate the moment for one of my favorite shows. In this video, I'm gonna give you an overview of how I built it. Everything from what components I used to how I programmed the microcontroller to how I hooked up a web server so I could actually send the messages from my laptop to the lights. Let's dive into how I brought this piece of sci-fi magic to life. I use a string of addressable LEDs, an ESP32 W row microcontroller board and the Arduino IDE for the coding portion. I set up a mini web server on the ESP32 that I can interact with from my laptop. By entering the ESP32's IP address into the web browser, I can access a custom interface where I type a message. And once I hit enter, my code on the ESP32 takes over, directing the LEDs to light up letter by letter, displaying the message that I entered. For this project, I used the ESP32W Rover, which came as part of a kit that I've linked down below. And the kit came with both the breadboard, the microcontroller, as well as well as male to male jumper cables and a USB cable that we're all going to be using in this tutorial. The ESP32 is Arduino compatible, so you can use the Arduino IDE for programming. However, if you prefer scripting, it actually can also run MicroPython. The W Rover can support Wi Fi and Bluetooth and also has a dual core processor that can handle some pretty complex operations. Moving on to the LEDs, these are the WS2811 individually addressable LEDs. That's kind of a handful of words to say. I link these exact ones in the description. Your old Christmas lights that are sitting in your closet are not going to work for this project and let me tell you why. Well, these LEDs are special because they are individually addressable. There's that word again, individually addressable. Well, all that means is that each one of these LEDs can be controlled separately. So if you have a strip of 50 lights, you can set one to red, one to green, one to blue, and so on. This can let you create patterns, animations, as well as text displays. You see the chip in this light? This is called the WS2811 chip. It takes the data from your controller and tells the red, green, and blue parts of your LED how bright they should be. So when you program your strip of LEDs, you are sending a command to each one of these individual chips. The last part that I used was this power supply adapter, and I also linked it down below. This part is actually not required because you can get the power that you need for these types of lights from just being connected to your computer or desktop. However, the cord that they provided was pretty short, and if you want to put this on the wall or somewhere a little further away, it's just hard to keep everything connected. Plus, when my computer isn't turned on, I still want to have this running. So now let's set up the hardware and try not to blow anything up. For the sake of simplicity, I am using jumper wires that are the same color combination as the cords for the LED strip. If you're using a different type of LED light that is not the one linked in the description, just be cautious that the colors may relate to other inputs. The blue jumper connects to the ground pin labeled GND. It completes the electrical circuit and ensures everything works properly. The red jumper connects to the 5V pin. It provides the necessary power for the LEDs to light up. And the white jumper connects to the data pin 18 and it sends the control signal that tells each LED what color to display and how bright it should be. First and foremost, you can install the Arduino IDE if you don't already have it. You can go to their website, you can find the download here, uh, get the latest version, and choose which machine you'll be downloading it for. I'm actually not gonna show this step any further because I already have it installed. Okay, so let's get to the coding portion. I already wrote out all the code. I figured it'd be easier to just go through it line by line and explain to you guys what you need to do and how it's all put together. So to start with, I imported a couple libraries here. I imported the Wi-Fi library because when you're using the ESP32, you need to have an established internet connection and be on the same Wi-Fi network as the laptop or computer that you're sending messages from. And then the web server is set up on the ESP32 so that you can connect to it and send messages to it from your laptop. And then the fast LED library is an LED library that just makes everything so much easier with working with LEDs. There's a couple other LED libraries that you can use, but this is the one that I specifically chose. Here I'm setting some constants, um, the SSID and the password. As you can see, they're empty strings here, but you're gonna wanna fill this out with the network name and the password of your Wi-Fi network that's gonna be both connected to your ESP32 and the device 
device that you're gonna be sending messages from for the sake of privacy and not filling out my information. Next, we have the LED strip settings. So here I'm defining some constants that we're gonna use later on down here. Um, the LED pin, so remember on the breadboard when we connected the white jumper, we connected it to pin 18 and that is where we're going to be getting input from. N the num LEDs is the number of LEDs, so 26 for the 26 letters of the alphabet. The brightness I set to 64, you can really adjust this to whatever value you would like. The LED type as we had talked about previously is the WS2811 and the color order is GRB, so that's for this specific string of lights. And here I'm defining an LEDs array that's going to hold the data for each individual LED. All right, so now we're going to create a web server um, and we're going to set it to port 80. To start with, we're going to want to add some logging to where we actually start the server and then we see the local IP address of the ESP32 logging so that we know what to connect to. This line initializes serial communication at a baud rate of 115200 bits per second. Serial communication allows the ESP32 to send and receive data to and from your computer via the USB connection. And it's really just essential for debugging and monitoring the ESP32's output using this serial monitor in the Arduino IDE. So think of this as your debugger. And then we're going to set a delay of a thousand milliseconds to ensure that the serial port has enough time to initialize properly before proceeding. And then we're going to print that we're starting the setup. We are going to connect to Wi-Fi. So here we're going to trigger this function, Wi-Fi.begin. We're going to use those constants for the SSID and password and pass them in here. Um, and then while the Wi-Fi status is not connected, we're going to set a delay for a thousand milliseconds, which is one second, and we're going to repeat that until we have successfully connected to the Wi-Fi, and then we will print out the local IP address, which is a local IP of the ESP32. Next, we set up the LED strip. So here we're using some functions that are provided by Fast LED. The first one is add LEDs, and we're passing a whole bunch of constants from above from the settings. Um, this function initializes the LED strip. It specifies the type of LEDs, the data pin, the color order, and the LEDs array holds the color data for each LED and then the num LED specifies a total number. So the set correction corrects the color to match typical LED strip characteristics, ensuring that the colors are displayed accurately. Next, we're going to set the brightness of the LEDs to the value defined. So in this case, it's 64. And then we're going to clear the LED array, setting all the LEDs to off. And then we're gonna run this show function which the naming might seem a little confusing. However, it updates the LED strip to display whatever the current state of the LED's array is. So after calling fastled.clear, the state is turned off. So this is an extra precautionary step that ensures that all the LEDs are in fact turned off. Um, next up, I created a server route. So this is on the root. Um, so when you go to that IP address in the browser, this is what you'll see, which is this HTML, which is a very not cute form. <laughs> and all it is is just like a text box with a send button and a heading. That's, that's all. It's really not that beautiful. But this will display that and then on success it will return 200 code so there's that and then the secondary route the server on show which is also a get method um, it will take that argument that you pass through so the values that are in the text field and then it will run this display message function that i built down below um, and once the message is successfully received you will see that the message is received plus the message on the screen in the browser so next we have this loop function where we call server.handle client and this just keeps making sure that our so web server is responsive to requests, so it's gonna loop over and keep looking for incoming requests. All right, now we're getting to the fun part where you actually get to change the color of these LEDs. So in this portion of the code, I need you to first understand how I envision this working. So I envision that when you have a message, all of the letters on the LED strip light up one after another so that they all show the message. And then after a couple seconds, once all of the letters are displayed, everything goes dark. So for example, if you have the word run, it'll show R and then U and then N and all of that will stay for a couple seconds and then disappear. 
So with that in mind, let's take a look at how this function works. So first I clear the existing LED state, and then I do a for loop where I check to see for each letter of the message, I want to display that letter, which I wrote a function for, and then I want to run the fast LED show that actually takes the updated state inside of the LEDs array, actually displays it on the screen, right? And then I want to delay that for a thousand milliseconds because I don't want all the letters to show up simultaneously. I want a little bit of a delay in between each of them. And then at the end, I also want to delay so that you can actually read the message um, and then clear and show, which as you remember, is the same up above where it removes the state black and then this validates that all of the LEDs are going to be turned off. Next, we have this display letter function that's being called here. So it takes the letter as a parameter. And the first thing that we actually need to do is we need to map what LED goes to what letter. So in order to do that, um, in case the user is using both uppercase and lowercase letters, we're just going to turn everything to uppercase. And then we're going to check to see if the letter is in between A and Z. For example, if they're using a special character, they can't do that. So we're just going to return negative one. Then otherwise we'll return the letter minus A, which will give us the index at which to display the light. And then once we have the index here, we can set that LED index value to light up. So next, in order to actually see this code working on the ESP32, we need to first upload it to the ESP32. So in order to do that, you first have to connect your ESP32 with the USB cord provided to the computer that you wrote this code on. And so as you can see here, you see how it says select other board and port. And when I see here, it says no ports discovered. That means that my USB is not connected to my computer. Once you connect that, you will see something here along the lines of COM3 and that's when you'll be able to actually upload it. Once you do hook up your microcontroller to the computer, you should be able to see a little green light light up on the ESP32. Let me show you the difference now that we have it connected. So we go here, you see it says COM3 serial port USB, so it is in fact connected. And here you're going to want to search for the W Rover kit all versions and click OK to make sure that those settings are correct there. And all you have to do is click this upload button and it's going to take a second to compile the sketch and actually upload it to the device, hopefully without any errors. You can ignore this. This is no big deal. Just make sure that before you upload that you do update line six and seven and you change these strings to your network information. Otherwise, this won't work. So I did this project months ago and I finally got to the point where I'm actually filming a tutorial now, but these letters have been on this wall for months. I am not re-putting them up for the purpose of this tutorial, so print them, draw them, hang them on a wall, do what you need to do, but make sure that they're close to each other because there's not a lot of space in between the LED light. And there's a couple of letters that fell off in the meantime. Tape has absolutely ruined my walls and I will have to repaint them soon, so just an FYI, if you're doing this project, use like a poster board or something because you don't want your walls looking like this. Let's hang these back up. I'm also missing an R. Don't know where it went and my printer's not working. So we're just going to go without it. Stranger Things lights, not too hard, right? If you enjoy this video, go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and in the comment section, let me know what project you want to see next. Oh crap, I think the demogorgons are coming for me.